everyone. The book we're going to be reading today is called The Matzo Ball Boy. Now, I know you all know the story of the gingerbread boy or the gingerbread man. So it's a little bit similar to that, but there are some things that are different in the matzo ball boy. Have you ever had matzo or matzo ball soup before? It's very good. So we're gonna read the matzo ball boy and we're gonna think about the things that are the same between this story and the story of the gingerbread man, the story we already know, and things that are different. Let's see. The matzo ball boy by Lisa Shulman, illustrations by Roseanne Litzinger. Oh, look, I see some eggs. Looks like maybe some salt, a bowl, a spoon, a measuring cup, some matzo. Looks like they're making something. Do you know what the different pieces are when you put them together to make something, what those pieces are called? They're the ingredients, that's right. Once upon a time, there was an old grandmother, a booby, who lived all alone. She lived in a tiny cottage at the edge of a small village in a faraway country whose name sounded like a sneeze. Her children were grown with children of their own, but could they be bothered to visit their mother? Not that she was complaining, but she couldn't help feeling lonely. Soon Passover would be here and there was no one to come to her Seder, the holiday dinner. No one to help retell the Passover story. No one to eat her sweet apple and walnut harisette and sip her delicious matzo ball soup. So, the morning of Passover, the booby decided to make herself a matzo ball boy. A friendly face in her soup was better than nothing, she thought. She mixed matzo meal with eggs, oil, salt, and water. From the dough, she shaped a soft little body and round matzo ball head. She gave him a carrot sliced nose, a curving celery mouth, and peppercorn eyes and buttons. Then she plopped him into a pot of chicken soup to cook. So, does the matzo ball boy sound sweet like the gingerbread boy? No, it doesn't sound sweet. It's not a dessert. It's going to cook in the chicken soup. Soon the most delicious smells wafted from the bubbling pot. When the old woman lifted the lid to see if the matzo ball boy was done, out he jumped. Oi, she cried in surprise. And where do you think you're going, my little matzo ball boy? The matzo ball boy puffed out his soft little chest. Boy schmoy. I'm the matzo ball man, booby, and I'm off to see the world. Then he ran out the door, leaving sh smears of schmaltz, or chicken fat, on her freshly mobbed kitchen floor. Not that she minded a little work, but would it have hurt him to wipe his feet? Wait, wait, the old woman cried, running after him. Put on a jacket or you'll catch your death of cold. But the matzo ball boy just laughed and kept on running. He called back over his shoulder. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the matzo ball man. The old booby ran as fast as she could, but she couldn't catch him. The matzo ball boy ran on and on through the village. As he passed the tailor shop, the Schneider put the last stitch in the rabbi's good coat, which he was patching for Passover, then rubbed his stomach. Oi, oi! You look good enough to eat, little matzo ball boy. But the matzo ball boy just laughed and kept on running. He called back over his shoulder. I've run away from my booby and I can run away from you too. So run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the matzo ball man. The Schneider and the old booby ran as fast as they could, but they couldn't catch him. The matzo ball boy ran on and on. Soon he passed the Yenta, the village gossip, and her ten children coming home from the market with apples, nuts, and bitter herbs for their Seder. The Yenta dropped her basket and cried, Oi, oi, you look good enough to eat, little matzo ball boy. But the matzo ball boy just laughed and kept on running. Do you know what he's going to say? 
He called back over his shoulder. I've run away from my booby and the Schneider and I can run away from you too. And then just to show off, he repeated, run, run as fast as you can, 11 times. Once for each of the children and once more for the Yenta herself. The Yenta, her children, the Schneider and the old booby ran as fast as they could, but they couldn't catch that matzo ball boy. Then the matzo ball boy ran faster than ever. It wasn't long before he came to the rabbi on his way to synagogue. The rabbi licked his lips and said, Oi, oi, you look good enough to eat, little matzo ball boy. But the matzo ball boy just laughed and kept on running. He called back over his shoulder. I've run away from my booby, the Schneider, the Yenta, and her children, and I can run away from you, too. So run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the matzo ball man. The rabbi, the Yenta, and her children, the Schneider, and the old booby ran as fast as they could, but they couldn't catch him. The matzo ball boy ran on and on until he came to the edge of a wide river. He could hear the others behind him getting closer and closer. Oy vey, now I have to cross a river too? The matzo ball boy slapped his forehead. I'll never see the world at this rate. If you'd care to climb on my back, I'll take you across, said a voice as smooth as schmaltz. The matzo ball boy turned around to find a hungry fox grinning at him. Ha! You must think I'm a real schlemiel, said the matzo ball boy. Do you think I don't know that old trick? First, you get me onto your back, then on your nose, then on your head, then onto your nose, and then I'm nothing more than a nosh for you. <laughs> the fox smiled a toothy grin. I can hear the others even closer now. Do you plan to wait here for them? on your life, boy chick, the matzo boy, ball boy laughed. For someone who came from a pot of hot soup, this river will be a refreshing change. I'm not made of gingerbread, you know. Me, I'm going for a swim. And with that, the matzo ball boy jumped into the river and began swimming across. The fox jumped in too, but after only a few strokes, he saw that he would never catch up with the quick little matzo ball boy. He turned back grumbling about cold food. So he got away. What do you think will happen? When the matzo ball boy reached the far shore, he looked back and saw the dripping fox, the rabbi, the yenta and her children, the schneider and the old booby standing on the other side calling, Oi, oi, come back, come back, little matzo ball boy. But the matzo ball boy just laughed and called, Swim, swim as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the matzo ball man. And since none of the others could swim, except for the fox who pretended he no longer cared, they turned away and began the long walk back to town. The old booby was the last to leave. So go, go, have a good time, she called. Not that I'm complaining, but is this the thanks I get for bringing you up from a bit of dough? Matzo ball boy watched them go and then, having nothing better to do, set off through the forest that lined the river's edge. It began to grow cold and dark and soon the hungry and tired matzo ball boy felt he could walk no further. Just then, he came upon a poor man dressed in rags. The matzo ball boy was about to run away when the man said kindly, Oi, oi, you need something good to eat, little matzo ball boy. The matzo ball boy nodded tiredly. I've run away from my booby, the Schneider, the Yenta, and her children, the rabbi, and a fox, and I could run away from you too if I wanted. Of course, I wouldn't refuse an offer of a good meal and a soft bed. The matzo ball boy looked expectantly at the man. No one should be alone and hungry on Passover, said the man. Come home with me. Our food is simple and our cottage small, but you are welcome to join the meal. So the matzo ball boy followed the poor man through the forest until they came to a tiny cottage, hardly bigger than a shack. Candlelight glowed warmly from the windows and a fire crackled cheerily on the grate. The man's wife sat by the fire stirring a big pot of soup. 
the most delicious smell wafted from the pot, reminding the matzo ball of something, though he couldn't think what. Welcome, said the woman with a smile. Come in, come in, said the man. The matzo ball boy took a step inside. Don't just stand there by the door where it's cold, said the man. Come near to the flame and warm yourself. He held his hands out to the dancing flames and uh, sighed in contentment. The matzo ball boy drew closer to the fire. Its heat made him feel uh, relaxed and drowsy. Hmm. The soup will be ready soon, said the woman. She tasted a spoonful, then shook her head in disappointment. It seems a bit thin tonight. Can't tell what else it needs. Can you? She held out the spoon to the matzo ball boy who took it and leaned over the pot to scoop up a taste. And then, well, who's to say how it happened? Perhaps he fell in. Perhaps he was pushed. All we know is that the poor man and his hungry wife had a delicious meal of matzo ball soup that night. You were maybe expecting a different ending? So now I'm going to read the author's note. The author's note tells us a little bit about what's going on in the story and can help us understand. Author's note. Passover, also known as Pesach, is a Jewish holiday that occurs in the spring. It is a time when Jewish people celebrate the Israelites' escape from Egyptian slavery more than 3,000 years ago. An important part of this celebration is the Passover Seder a dinner at which the story of how the Jews became a free people is retold. Special foods are eaten to remember both the bitterness of slavery and the sweetness of freedom. At Passover, Jews eat a flat, cracker-like bread called matzah, as well as delicious dumplings called matzah balls, made from the same flour. Traditionally, matzah balls remain in the soup and don't go running off to see the world, but who's to say it couldn't happen? And here's a glossary. So you might not have known some of the words that were in the story, but the glossary can tell us. Boy chick, a tricky fellow. Boy. Booby. Grandmother. Feh. Fooey. Heroset. A mixture of chopped apples and nuts. Matzah. Unleavened bread. Matzah ball. A kind of dumpling made from matzah meal. Nash. A little bite to eat. Snack. Oi. Oh, oy vey. oh dear, shlemiel, a fool, schmaltz, chicken fat, schneider, a tailor, seder, the ritual Passover meal, yenta, a gossip. The end. The story ended differently from the story of the gingerbread ball, but the gingerbread boy, but it didn't turn out too well for the matzo ball man. I hope you liked reading The Matzo Ball Boy by Lisa Shulman. I'll see you next time. Bye.